it's Frolicking Gnomes here, and it has been a hot minute since I've recorded anything. In fact, this is probably the first time I'm known as Frolicking Gnomes. Um, so I'm not really going to show you how to recolor so much. I'm going to assume you mostly know how to do that. But to for this tutorial, I'm just going to grab a toddler skirt. Um, I think it's helpful to grab two. I want a plain white and then something that's going to have some decent contrast to help me select the parts that I want. So, um, this one seems good. So, I'm going to, this is so unorganized, but that's okay. Let's save it in the toddler. Um, pattern tutorial. And frolicking gnomes, floral, BPR, toddler, skirt. Sounds good. All right, so I opened it up here, and we have a creepy baby. And let's go ahead, I don't know why I'm playing with this camera so much. Let's go ahead and export this. I'm super basic when it comes to naming things. Numbers work great. All right. And I'm going to go ahead and open both of those up. Now, I mostly only want to use the white one. However, I'm going to use the other one to help me select stuff. So what I'm going to do is I am going to, it doesn't really matter what colors you have here, I'm going to add a bar to the top and bottom. Now I'm just using this rectangle marquee tool to select the bottom and then alt backspace um, will fill it in and then control A, control C, control V. This helps so that it lines up properly, those bars will help me and I can delete them once this is in. So again, this is I'm going fast through the stuff that you probably already do if you do recolors. Um, so what I want to do is I want to select just the um, belt and or skirt, but there we go, magic wand tool. So I think it's gonna be easier to just select the belt so what I'm going to do is, this is my magic wand, I'm just going to kind of select out the belt and let's see. I'm also like not an expert recolor. Most of the recolors I do are for personal use. I think that works. I'm not going to be picky. If you're super good at recolors, you're probably like, oh my gosh, you're doing this all wrong. So what I'm going to do then is I have my selection, but I'm going to go back down. You can even hide this down here. And I'm going to hit Control J to copy the white of the belt. Um, let me go ahead and name this belt. I'm going to call this one contrast, but again, I don't need that one really. And then this one we'll call skirt base. So what I'm going to do is for all of these, I'm just going to leave a plain white um, belt and I'm going to use the white base of the skirt. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a layer above. I'll call this one pattern. If you do Control Alt G, it um, I don't even know what you would call that. It's a, it creates a clipping mask, I think. Um, so you can probably right click, and there's something about clipping mask if you're not a shortcut person. And I'm going to go ahead and fill this in with plain white. So that uh, was control backspace because that was my background color. So this is pure white filling just the skirt base. And I'm going to change the 
um, blending to multiply. This will help show the, the folds of the skirt that are naturally there. Now I'm going to double click on this to bring up the layer style and you will want to go to pattern overlay and if you downloaded my patterns um, you um, can anyway so those. if you go to pattern overlay um, you might need to go to this drop down menu and then hopefully it should be showing up here um, I'm going to tentatively let's do that and then mine is not there, awesome, but I do have it saved. So you can load them that way. Oh, but I wanted like a whole new, eh, I don't know. I have to play around with it, but you should be able to load them and get them in there. So the grayscale ones are gonna be the most universal in terms of any colors you want, but I have some pre-done um, berry pastel rainbow sea uh, colors already done up. So let me show first with uh, grayscale what you would do. So you can resize the pattern and I'm noticing this is really blurry. So if you go too small. So you want to find something that's not too blurry unless it just hadn't loaded. Nope. Okay. That's too bad. Okay. So you want to find something reasonably not too blurry um, but you don't want it like giant either so that looks good to me um, you'll want to select this to multiply as well so again it's gonna show through the creases and whatnot then you want to go up to color overlay and this is where you can grab any of the I have them saved as swatches but any of the um, colors from noodles or really any color you want honestly um, you can select which color so um, let's do let's just do the first one hit OK um, you're gonna change the blending mode to color you can mess with the opacity although my guess is you'll want to leave it full if that's not looking good you could always try a multiply but that's going to tend to be darker an overlay which is going to be brighter um, so it just kind of depends on the look you're going for um, you can also mess with the opacity of the pattern itself if you want something more subtle um, it'll sh by default show through the color that you set up and the up here so then you're just showing how hard you want the pattern to show up on it so that's pretty cool you can play around with that I think for these ones I want to just do maybe let's try 50 do a 50% right so that's great and groovy um, let's go ahead and save this as a um, three and let's load it in so let's go ahead and add a swatch and import three and we see that we have a cute floral skirt it still has the white ribbon which is nice so that looks pretty awesome okay so um, I'm going to go ahead and you wouldn't have to do this but just to show you how to do the other one um, again I'm going to fill it with white that was black um, let's see create a clipping mask if so this is again going down to the skirt base if I hide the skirt base it disappears I will double click and go to pattern overlay now this time I'm going to choose one of the um, pre-done ones as it, and it's not going to, I want to zoom in a little bit. And again, I should have no, took note of what size I made it. So it looks like 50% is pretty good. So we'll just leave it on 50. Again, you change this to multiply. 
and I didn't do that out here. This needs to be multiply. So that's all you really need to do there. Um, again, that's why our background is white because it will preserve the color in the best way. If I did this on, I guess, for example, this as my base, and then I put the pattern on, you're going to have color showing through. And not that that's bad, and you may totally go that route in terms of that's how you want to do your recolors. And actually, it well, that one already changed the color. Anyway, so that's why we did, did the white. Um, you can play with the opacity if you want it lighter. You can't really make it darker, unfortunately. Um, and without, maybe if you doubled up, yeah. So if you duplicated the layer, you could make it darker. Um, and then you could mess with this second opacity to get the desired saturation. Um, but that's, that's pretty much it. Um, you could, if you wanted more of the wrinkles to show through, lighten it a little bit, which I might lighten it. Um, maybe do like an 80%. That seems good. So the nice thing is once you have these set up, you can go in really fast and change the patterns out for your multiple um, saves that you're going to do. So let's add another swatch, import four. So pretty cute. Um, I mean, if you compare it to the originals, there's not as much of the lines showing through, um, but that's partially because the white, they don't show up super well on anyway. But it's not like it's completely flat either. Um, so yeah, that's how you can add some quick, easy patterns to your recolors in both a kind of more of a solid with patterns or the presets. So I hope this tutorial made some sort of sense and that it is helpful. Um, until next time, happy simming!